All right, hello everyone, Adivan here. Time to do a video I've been putting off for a long time, probably almost a year. Uh, I'm finally gonna show you the updated Force Cascade build. This is basically the build I've been running for, well, this exact build for the last like three months, but it is basically the exact same build I've been running for over a year. Uh, it's not really that much different from the last build I showed, but this one is just about perfect. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this on the road. Let's start off with training. All right, our innate talent, basically, I've been. it doesn't really matter which of the two, they're exactly the same. I've been running um, the Tempest or the Squall, they're the exact same thing. 5 constitution, 10 endurance, 5 strength, 8 dexterity, 5 intelligence, or excuse me, 10 ego, 5 presence, 10 recovery, and you'll see the Temptus and them are both the same. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. Alright, primary super stats. Of course, I always go with ego for my range damage and strength for my melee. I just think it just works out better. I know you can get some uh, different trees in the specialization using other things, but I like the Ego one, especially for Forest Cascade builds, which is what this is. Uh, secondary super stats are Recovery and Endurance, because the only way to get more damage out of Forest Cascades has been proven to be Fire More Forest Cascades. All right, we're going to go with, for talents, I'm selecting Indomitable, Tireless, Energetic. Get these, the big three in. And this is kind of a min-max situation with uh, with this build. I can get away with it because I'm running full Justice gear and full Onslaught slash Cosmic gear. Mostly just Onslaught. Cosmic gear really isn't that good. All right. And we have Daredevil, Amazing, Stamina, Worldly, and those other ones. All right. Now the fun stuff, specializations. Slight deviation from what I think before. I'm just going straight up Insight for the uh, cost discount for range powers and Aggression for 20% more, uh, more offense from items. Now, here's where it's also a little different. Excuse me. Yeah, eh. I'm not going to edit those out. You can listen to me on. <laughs> I'm going to put three in follow through for critical severity. Your ego increases your critical severity. And my last two are going to go into six cents to increase critical chance. Now, you'll see with this build, it gives me some pretty decent stats right off the bat. So, with this insane gear I'm running, oops, we have justice, justice, justice. So you can see kind of what we're going with here. The reason I can get away with this is because I'm running big gear and stuff, whatnot. But this build will work with other gear. I would just allocate my points a little differently to get some more survivability in there. Anyways, now the next two trees I'm going to be taking are Guardian, Fortified Gear, and Relook. Ruthless, and then Best Defense, and Find a Mark. Find a Mark is the one that to it that exposes targets to more crits the more you hit them and stacks you know three times so you can expose a mark three times with three or <laughs> you can expose them three times which gives you a lot more critical chance so even though my critical chance over here is only 27 percent because i have uh, find the mark it actually goes up a good bit Here's those. And of course, Vindicator. Now, yes, I know they changed the offensive and defensive stacking 
so it doesn't multiply as many times, but it still does a bit. And of course, we're going to take Merciless for the uh, critical severity, mass destruction for even more critical chance with an AoE, which that's what Force Cascade is, and a little bit more offense slash defense from Modified Gear. Finally, Ego Mastery raised these super stats by 20. So, bam. So, offense, 360, defense, uh, 229, 54% damage resistance. That's pretty good. Critical chance, 27%, 27.7%, and severity, 126.8%, which is about the maximum we get from this build. Alrighty. And finally, we're going we're to go ahead and uh, pick out some more powers. Or show you the powers first. Uh, in no particular order, we're just going to start at the top. Unstoppable, because of course it gives you a small amount of damage. Oh, right there. Generates a small amount of energy when you knock an opponent. This effect scales if you're recovering. Because we have recovery as a super stat, it gives you a good bit of uh, energy. So every time you hit something... With Force Cascade, it counts as a, an attempt to knock, so it gives you some energy back. And you'll see energy return is a really big part of this build. I took Convention, Conviction and put it up to rank 2. Force Bolts, I put it to rank 2, but I did not take Accelerated Metabolism. Uh, force Eruption, I took the Gravitational Polarity, which gives a 15% boost of damage. Uh, and no other ranks. Also, I can use, before the alert start, I can use Force Eruption to build stacks, so when the alert starts, I'm at full stacks already. Force Shield, max out everything. Personal Force Field for when I end up being a tank, which happens more often than I'd care to admit. <laughs> the uh, ranked out. Field Surge, I didn't take Power Swell, I just didn't really, didn't really it wasn't as beneficial as I, I thought it could have been, so I got rid of that. But I have the shield just to heal my uh, my um, yeah my my personal force field when I do end up tanking. Of course, here's the money maker: force cascade, two ranks, and accelerated metabolism. So sometimes it gives a little bit of a a twenty percent chance to gain some energy back, which is always useful. Nanobot swarm. And uh, this is actually one of my major healing powers. And you see, I'm going to, I left these two advantage points here. But I'm going to choose the uh, rejuvenating injectors. Burst Shot is our uh, armor piercing. Oh, sorry, Burst Shot is our debuff. And gives us an armor, you know, applies armor piercing, which uh, reduces crushing and piercing damage resistance. So. The big thing there is the crushing damage res resistance because that's what Force Cascade is, just straight crushing. And of course, I didn't take anything on here. We have Lock and Load, which gives us a 50% increase to all damage and 30% discount. Now, it's weird with Force Cascade, you really don't see that 50% increase to damage. Um, I haven't quite figured it out, but I'm thinking that all these. Um, all the damage boosting and all the self damage buff powers count as an energy form. And some, most of them say it. I chose lock and load because it didn't say it, but I, I'm still thinking it does. But, anyways, it gives you, you know, active, uh, or it gives you cost discount, so that helps out a little bit. Gravity Driver is essentially another debuff, a damage res resistance debuff, so that's why I took it. I put two slots in it because it just, it just has a nice little damage hit. Uh, concentration, I sometimes I'll I'll do rank three. Most of the time I just leave it at rank two. But uh, I, I like to have it already already buffed up at least one rank. And because I'm lame, I took ranks in flight. So that's essentially the new build. And I'm gonna crank the parser back up and see what Mike can get out of DPS out of this. I was getting a little over four grand uh, earlier, but you know, it's just this 
this build is suiting my play style a lot, a lot more efficiently than I did in the last one. And I honestly, don't draw as much aggro as I was before. I don't know if it's because I'm doing less damage or what's going on, but it seems way bit more efficient and just as much damage. Anyway, let me uh, let's see here. What is it? Commit log one. You see, I'm already at two stacks. Three stacks. Oops, too fast. <laughs> There's four stacks. Five stacks. Six stacks. Seven. Eight. Alright, my eight stacks. And ready to rock. Move it off with Gravity Driver. Debuff. And lock and load. Yeah, 13 right off the bat. It's not bad. 14, even better. Number 13. Where are my criticals? There's a 26. 27. 23. Yeah, I can't forget to keep using up that, uh, number 23. Doing pretty good. So, anything over 21 is already excellent. And as long as you're getting around 11 to 12 in non-criticals, it's really good. So yeah. Every once in a while, I'll, when I get everything going at the same time, I'll pull off a 30, 32, somewhere in there, critical. Depending on how many stacks of Expose I have. Let's see if I can get one. You know, one of the bad things about Force Cascade is you don't have... Yeah, see there's one. It doesn't, you don't have as many chances to add on some of your uh, secondary effects. Like the Pulse Rifle or the Assault Rifle, it's always going. So you get multiple chance per per damage tick for extra things that pop up to proc some of these other effects, and it just doesn't happen. So I'm at my I'm at about four thousand three hundred right now DPS. So that's not bad. Let's see a bunch of twelves. Yeah, Force Cascade works really weird because it sucks power. See? Oh, that's agnostic. But if Force Cascade didn't eat uh, energy forms, then it would be the most powerful move in the game. Right? The most powerful range DPS attack in the game. But because it eats energy forms, it's just. Gotta give everybody else a chance, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we're over 4,500 now, so I guess I should be happy. Fill up the stacks. No fix. Force Cascade, debuff, power up, and booms. And no, not one critical. There you go. We're at the end. <laughs> yep. I'm holding right around 4,500. 4,400, 4,500. I'm not paying attention anyway, so. 
even without the uh, little power swell here. Or hot spot that force eruption produces, it still hits pretty hard. That's over 7k DPS if that was. Yeah. So yeah, overall not bad, huh? I'm enjoying it and uh, actually learning a lot still from this game. And but I also have learned that there's really nowhere else to go with this build. That's basically it, unless I want to start doing just a uh, to look for just the biggest baddest hit I can. And honestly, I'd rather have a little bit more survivability, repeatability. You know, someone asked me, someone from the super group asked me the other day how I'm able to run around the game just tapping everything. And I told him it's just <laughs> combination of gear and the high speed um, build here. So it's a lot of fun walking, running around places, one-shotting every minion and charging just a little bit up for, uh, you know, lieutenants and bosses. For the most part, there's not much I can't one-shot in the game anymore, so we need to, uh, developers need to get hot. There's some more challenges out there for us. And from the looks of it, we're it's the game's been been steadily moving forward, so can't complain too much. Anyways, you all stay safe, and if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and send me a, an in-game chat, email, or leave a comment here on this video. Uh, the... Link to the build will be in the description. Y'all stay safe.